When I was about 13, I spent most weekends tramping the hills close to home with my pal Gus. One soggy day in early spring, we were exploring high above Strachar when we came across the wreckage of an American World War II bomber. There were bits and pieces of the aircraft scattered everywhere. And I've even got a photograph of Gus sitting on what turned out to be the tail gun turret of a B-29 flying superfortress. Years later, I was amazed to come across newspaper articles that claim the plane was carrying diamonds smuggled out of Europe. And then there are stories of high denomination banknotes blowing around the crash site and of an extra previously unaccounted for body on the scene. Conspiracy theorists had a field day. I'm heading back to the crash site with Ross Galt, who helped build the memorial cairn to the 20 men who lost their lives here in 1949. Oh, wow, yeah. That's a huge area covered by wreckage. It was very different from when I was last here. There were no trees. So this is the site of the B-29 super fortress. That's correct. The remains of one of two aircraft that took off um, from Lincolnshire, England. Uh -huh. And it was heading home to Kansas in America. And unfortunately, this is... Um, well, it never made it. It never made it. Do we know what happened? The captain of the aircraft believed he was out over the water. Uh -huh. So he thought he had a safe... Uh, descent, oh, can come in safely. Uh, to basically to lose height and come out of what's known as icing conditions. Now, what do you make of the conspiracy theories that have grown up around this crash site? I think it's like a lot of things in life. There's elements of truth. Um, the captain of the aircraft was a trained jeweller. When he was leaving the force, he was going to set up his own business, his own jewellery business. Well, what about the stories of high denomination banknotes floating about? The aircraft came to a violent end that burned for 24 hours, approximately. Papers, things like that. I'd have mm -hmm. imagined that most of that, if not mm -hmm. all of that, burned. Given the intense heat, it's surprising that parts of the plane, such as the tail gun turret and cylinder heads, are still recognisable. Even some personal effects have survived. There's been two separate occasions where personal objects have been found within the wreckage. Was oh, that it? This is the ring here. It looks more like bling than a ring. So that belongs to one of the crew members on board, um, Paul Knight. Um, when the cairn was being built, a couple of small bits of wreckage were moved. It was actually my brother uh, that found this. What's that? And this is a dog tag. It's a name tag? For Anthony Christus. So these two items uh, are very close to going back to America uh, through the extensive really? research and tracking down. Finally, these objects will make their way to, to America. Years, 70 years too late, uh -huh. but uh, they are getting home eventually. I'm glad these personal items will finally complete their journey across the Atlantic. It will make a symbolic homecoming for the American airmen who died on a Scottish hillside all those years ago.